Hey, what's up everyone? Craig here with Weeping Willow Guitar Lessons. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at Bob Weir's rhythm guitar parts on Hell in a Bucket. All right, Hell in a Bucket was written by Bob Weir, John Perry Barlow, and Brent Midland. And it's, it's a rockin' tune. It's an upbeat rockin' tune. It's in the key of B, and the intro sounds like this. <laughs> All right, so what we have here is Bob Weir playing a B power chord, B5 chord, with some fills. All right, so a quick note about this B5 chord, this B power chord. So if you just play this chord just like this, and if you watch any footage of Bobby playing it, that's how he fingers it. It's fine, but you know, there's something missing there. So I tried adding this F sharp and B on top. And I thought that, you know, it added a little extra to it, but it just, it didn't quite sound right. And then I accidentally hit this open B string by accident. And I realized right there that that, that was the Bobby sound on this song. So what we have is a B5 chord. So the sixth string, seventh fret, fifth and fourth strings, ninth frets, and then open B string. So the way I go about playing that is, you know, I use my middle finger right here just to dampen the third string so it doesn't play. And then I use the flesh on my index finger to stop the high E string. So what you get are the bottom three strings and the second string. Don't need a whammy bar or tremolo arm to play this tune, but it really seems like this song was tailor made for the whammy bar. All right, so in typical Bob Weir fashion, you know, the fills are always going to change. But um, I came up with a, something just for the for this intro. So here's what I've got for you. So we start off with that power chord. play the seventh frets of the third and second strings and then the ninth fret of those two strings just slightly bend release pull off to the seventh fret and then back and then the second time it's just going to be the seventh frets of the third and second strings Followed by the ninth fret of the third and second strings. Then next we have this. So we've got these three strings, the fourth, third, and second strings, and I've got the ninth fret of the fourth string, eleventh fret of the third, twelfth fret of the second string. So that is a B power chord or a B5 chord. We just have root, fifth, and then the root. And then we're going to chromatically descend this middle string, this third string. So now we have seventh fret of, or ninth fret of the fourth string, tenth fret of the third string, twelfth fret of the second string. So that is a B diminished chord without the third, or just root and flat five. Now we have the ninth frets of the fourth and third strings and 12th fret of the 2nd string. So this is an E5 chord. We're doubling the 5th, so 5th, root, 5th. 
And then we go to this B chord right here. And we're gonna hammer on from the flat third to the major third. And then play the top seventh frets of the top two strings, second and first strings. So the second time, I'm just playing a B minor triad here, 9th fret of the 4th, 7th fret of the 3rd and 2nd strings, and using the whammy bar. So on the album version, every time Weir plays that, he's playing a minor chord right there and then using the whammy bar. Uh, usually in live performances and especially later on in like today with Dead & Company, he mostly always hammers on to that. Uh, major third, but I figured throwing them both in there is kind of a nice mix. All right, then we have an E chord, and this is your typical. Bobby voicing, you'll hear that in a jack straw. So we have the root or seventh fret on the fifth string, major third or sixth fret on the fourth string, and then another root, we have the ninth fret on the third string. And then I'm playing an E sus, so taking my middle finger, mashing it down, so I get the seventh fret of the fourth string. to a B. All right, so that is the intro, and it's also what's played during like the jam sections. All right, so let's take a look at the verse. So what do we have going on here? So after we have that E to B figure. So we're starting with a B5 chord, but we're adding another fifth to the bottom. So F sharp or the ninth fret of the fifth string. So that's ninth fret to the uh, fifth and fourth strings. 11th fret of the 3rd string, 12th fret on the 2nd string. And then with the downbeat, we're playing this B7, or B diminished 7th chord, but without a 3rd. So we have our um, ring finger here on the 11th fret of the 5th string, index finger on the 7th fret of the 4th string, middle finger on the 10th fret of the 3rd string, then pinky stays up there on that 12th fret of the 2nd string. And then you lift up that index finger, and we have this E chord right here. So we have the major 3rd on the bottom, Then so that's the 11th fret is going to stay there on the 5th string. Then we're holding down the 9th fret to the 4th and 3rd string, then the pinky up on that 12th fret of the 2nd string. So note though this conflicts with the harmony of the chord because actually the keyboard and lead guitar are playing E minor. But you know, it, it works and it sounds fine. I think part of it is that note's really not, you don't really hear it much. But that's what we have, so we have. And we go to this B chord, so we're hammering on from the minor third to the major third. Back to the B5, then we start over. And then, you know, you don't really hear this. You know, Bob Weir comes up here, kind of the 12th fret, plays a E power chord and slides off and then plays 
this open E chord. So to an A. All right, so this is where the power chord fun really starts. So then we have a D5. So I'm playing the fifth fret of the fifth string, then seventh fret of the fourth and third strings. Slide that down to a C sharp five, B five, then A five. And if you want, you can play an open A in between. But it's really fast, so it's just whatever you get. And then we have the A5. Then we're gonna take that index finger and move down to the fourth fret, then back up. Then we take this shape, move it to the sixth fret, up to the seventh. So we have. So put that together and we get. We go to the chorus. So for the chorus, we start with an F sharp five. So we're playing F sharp five, then C sharp five, slide down to B five, open A, and then F sharp five again. then A5. So it sounds like this. Alright, again a little slower. So what we have there is E. So we're playing the major third or 11th fret of the fifth string, and then the ninth frets of the fourth and third strings. And then we go to E minor. So that major third drops down to the minor third. Then we play B, and again we hammer on that minor third to major third. And then we play an A. So this is your C shape of the cage system A. Bobby plays that shape all the time. And we have. Do that three times. And that E to B figure. All right, so that is the chorus. All right, now let's take a look at the bridge. So for the bridge, we start on the F sharp power chord and play a C sharp power chord. All right, it sounds like this. All right, so F sharp power chord, C sharp power chord. Then we're going to play an A right here, slide it up to B. And then we're playing an A again, but instead of going Bob plays this shape, which, if you notice, it's that B5 shape, so it's a 5 chord. We have the 5th, the root, the 5th, and the root. So 
So E5 down to C sharp 5 to B5 and then G sharp 5 to A5 and then we go back to this you already know. Alright, so that's all the parts. Now it's just about the form of the song. So for the intro, we have that with the fills. Then we have this. That descending figure. And then for our verse. And then it so it goes intro, verse, chorus, and then we have another interlude, which is just usually Bobby playing fills. Then we do a verse, chorus again, and then we go to the bridge, and then we have a longer section of just a B5 with some fills while Jerry solos. And then at the end of that section has this descending figure again. Then we go through the verse, the chorus, and then it has an extended coda. And this is the extended coda part. Just round and round and round until we have... Alright, so if you're getting a lot out of these videos, hit that like button. It really helps the channel. Subscribe if you don't want to miss any other videos, and I will see you next time.